I very recently set up a small business on Etsy selling my art. One year ago, I set up my small business selling my art online. A lot of things have happened this year, both good and bad. I've learned a lot and I've grown a lot. So let's talk about that. So let's start right at the beginning. It's July 2022. I had just graduated and gotten my first ever full-time job in a call center. Yep, I did an animation degree and ended up in a call center for a travel agency. I didn't like it. <laughs> I took two calls, both people screamed at me the entire time and it kind of clicked in my head, I don't want to live like this. <laughs> I just went through three years of uni and got myself thousands of pounds into debt. Um, I'm not doing this. <laughs> but it was the one thing that pushed me to do the one thing that I had been dreaming of for years. Start my own business and start a YouTube channel. <laughs> Skip to August 2022. I started researching into how to start a small business. I spent so many days watching other people you start their small businesses, which was really hard to find because I couldn't find anyone that was like sharing the whole growing part of a small business. Everyone seemed to be kind of showing that they're already successful business, which inspired me greatly, of course. So I was a little lost, but I just tried to get as much information as I possibly could. I should also mention at this point, I also had a YouTube channel. I actually started my YouTube channel back in July, not August. I started an art YouTube channel, which didn't last very long because I didn't like <laughs> the process of filming art videos. Now, this is where it gets good. September, 2022. I opened my Etsy store. Now, this was a very, very big day for me. I remember wanting to throw up because I was so nervous. It was terrifying, honestly. <laughs> I had no idea what I was doing at all. I did a lot of research, but I still just had no idea what I was doing. I started Etsy with seven listings. Seven. Now, if any of you happen to own an Etsy store, or you're also a small business, you probably can realize how small that is. If you're starting a small business, don't do that. I remember rushing to get my products out and to open my Etsy shop. I really rushed the entire process. I had, I think, five art prints in two badges uh, on my Etsy shop at the time. None of them were consistent with each other. There was no consistent art style or branding. I was literally just taking old pieces of artwork that I had and putting them up on Etsy and thinking, well, that's fine, that'll do. That's how you run a small business. No, it's not, unfortunately. It's, it's not that easy. <laughs> now this really, really hindered my growth. If you are starting a small business, I really, really implore you to not only do your research, but spend months making designs that are consistent with each other on brand, you understand your brand, your shop, what your small business is really gonna be, who your target audience are. Don't just be like me and take all of your artwork, scan them into a printer, put them on the computer, and just, that's it, there you go, done, no. Get as many different products as you can. I would honestly even suggest starting an Etsy shop with at least, I'd say, at least 20 to 30 products. Now, the reason I know this was a bad idea was because I got two orders when I went live from people that I know in real life who wanted to support me. But after that, I didn't have a single order for over a month because I had seven listings and most of them were art prints and none of them were consistent with each other. <laughs> it was all over the place, honestly, it wasn't good. My third order that I got was one single sticker as well, so it didn't even get much better from there, honestly. <laughs> Orders were far and few in between, and I remember back then I was thinking, what am I doing wrong? Why are people not ordering? I don't get it. Looking back now, as someone who's a year on and who's had a small business for a year now, I can see why no one ordered and why my growth was so small. <laughs> My shop was all over the place. I didn't even know what I was doing. I didn't know anything about my shop. I was new. I've never had a small business before. A lot of people who start small businesses do that as well because we don't know what we're doing. We don't know, we don't know anything really. And that's okay. I did have to learn the hard way, but I did learn a lot and I did learn very quickly as well. 
It got to about October 2022, one month in. I realized my art YouTube channel really wasn't doing very well. I wasn't enjoying the videos. No one was really watching my videos. Obviously, social media is a big, big part of having an online shop because that's how you drive sales to your shop. Also, I just wasn't enjoying it, so why would I keep that up? I decided to change my niche altogether and I decided to talk about my small business but not in the way that I do today. I used to do sit down talky videos about I started a small business, my income, expensive, trying new things. It was just a lot of speaking to camera and sitting still. Not that fun, even though I'm doing it right now. We're gonna ignore that. This is a very special video. <laughs> I changed from being an art YouTube channel to being a, what I'm gonna call a small business information channel. I did enjoy this style of making videos a lot more. It was a lot easier and also my first video that I posted on my small business got 7,000 views, which was a massive, massive jump from getting 10 views per video. <laughs> I began trying a lot of new things because I realized very quickly that what I had done when I opened my Etsy shop wasn't working out. I started designing so many new products. I started trying to find manufacturers to buy keychains. I got a Cricut machine. That, you can probably guess how that worked out. I have videos on it, you guys know. I even tried print on demand. That did also, that also didn't work. That was also not good for me personally. <laughs> I didn't like the process of it. It did nothing for me. I didn't make a single sale. It was pointless, but I was trying and that's all that matters. It still wasn't easy, but I was getting a few more orders come November, December time. I mean, that's Christmas time. So you're gonna wanna hope you get a few more orders, but also because my videos were doing a little better, I noticed that after I got things like keychains and some more stickers on my shop, People were, I was starting to get a few more orders. People were buying. So I kind of tried to go with that, but I also wasn't happy with how slow things were. So I really tried to speed them up by trying things such as print on demand, which like I said, didn't work out. My stock levels were still very low. I think at that point I had maybe 13 items on my shop. Not great, not great. <laughs> Come January, 2023. Ooh, we're in 2023 now, exciting. Oh. One thing I should mention actually about that whole time from September to January, Etsy put me in a payment account reserve, which basically means I didn't get anything from Etsy because they withheld all of my money. And then in January, because I wasn't receiving any money, I actually had no idea that I was losing money. <laughs> Because I wasn't, I wasn't receiving money, right? They were holding all of my funds. I didn't actually know how much I was making. So when January came, I thought I would be getting around a hundred pounds, which was big for me at the time because I was like, whoa, I've never made that much money with my small business. Finally, I've been waiting three months to get this money. It's gonna arrive in my bank account, super excited. Nope, nope, this whole time I had been running Etsy ads and not realizing that I was losing money. So I actually ended up getting nothing. The first three, four months of running a business, an Etsy shop, and I made nothing. You can imagine how disheartened I was, but I tried to move past it. I realized Etsy isn't doing it right now. Etsy isn't working. So I'm gonna try something new. Q market stalls. You guys love the market stall vlogs. I love the market stall vlogs. My first ever market stall for my small business was in February, right at the beginning of February. February 2nd, I believe it was. This was a massive, massive change for me and my small business. I didn't know how the market stalls were gonna go. I paid 20 pound for a table. For my very first market stall, 20 pound for a table. But it looked awful, honestly. It was very rushed. I did not think about what my table display was gonna look like. Like I said, I got no money from Etsy at all. So I had like nothing, I was just, using scraps basically. I was just trying to make do with what I had, even though my table looked awful. I made 36 pounds and I realized I loved doing the market stall. Of course, I was very well aware that my market stall table wasn't that good looking. I knew I needed more stock and I knew I needed a better display. So from February 2nd onwards, I made it my mission to get better stock, get more stock, and get a better display because it felt like I was really onto something with these market stalls. I felt like I was finally maybe making a bit of 
progress of an attraction whereas with Etsy it just felt like a hopeless downward spiral and sometimes honestly it still does. <laughs> so I began growing my stock like a lot. I decided to try a new manufacturer and I got keychains that were way better than my old ones. I ended up getting acrylic pins, I got sticker sheets, I got notepads. I was working my butt off. I even started buying lots of new display items for my uh, table at market stalls. As you can see, there's a little slight bit of growth there. You can see the difference from my first market stall going forward. Each time I'm adding more and more to the market stall display. And each time it's looking a little better and better. So I was very hopeful about this. I also continued to challenge myself. When I first applied for my very first market stall, I remember how scared I was. I wasn't sure if it was gonna work out. I was really nervous. But I realized that when I'm scared, it usually means I'm doing something big. Sometimes it doesn't work out, like for print on demand. I was so terrified to do print on demand and it didn't work out. But I was also scared to do market stalls and now they are my biggest income for my small business. So during this period, I really realized how good being scared was when it comes to my small business. I realized this, the more I pushed myself out of my comfort zone, the better I was doing. For example, investing in new products, such as trying new manufacturers, getting notepads for the first time, all terrifying, but all really worth it. I also started learning a little bit more about myself during this time and my brand as well. I started to really, really think about my target audience, who they are, their ages. I even wrote out like what they do in a morning, like what their jobs are, what their hobbies are, what their problems are, their names, where they live in the world, what I want to bring to the world and what makes me unique in comparison to everyone else who also sells things like stickers and keychains and all these other things. What makes me unique? Once I started thinking about those things, I noticed a massive, massive growth <laughs> within my small business. It started getting a lot better. Not only did sales go up, but I noticed that things such as my Etsy shop started looking better, my YouTube started looking better, my displays at market started looking better because I was making sure that I was keeping everything on brand, consistent, I knew my brand colors. These, by the way, are all things you should absolutely think about before starting a small business. However, I was just a little bit naive and a little bit excited and hopeful and it is still one of my biggest regrets. So pro tip from Abby, do those things first, not after you start a small business. <laughs> one other thing I've noticed this past year of being a small business, nothing ever lasts forever. If you have a really good month, chances are next month could be a really bad month. If you have a really bad month, chances are next month could be a really, really, really good month. It's not linear. Things got harder. While I saw a lot of growth, there were obviously a lot of things, as there are with most small businesses, that kept holding me back, that were just so disheartening. One of them for me was not having money. One thing I probably should have mentioned at the beginning of this video, I actually quit my full-time job to start doing the small business stuff and to start doing YouTube. From July 2022 all the way to April 2023, I didn't have a job, therefore I had no money. Things were very, very hard. Once again, I'll admit, I was very hopeful and I was very naive. I did think and I did hope that by the time it got to April, I would have a business that is sustaining itself and bringing me in profit. And you know what? I say that I was very naive to think that I was, but the problem is, is that a lot of people, when I was starting a small business and researching into becoming a small business, a lot of people on YouTube, Instagram, blogs were telling me that it's that, that I could make six figures in one year if I opened a small business. They were telling me that in a month I'd be making thousands and I'd be getting hundreds of orders if I just did this or I just did that. It would work and I'd get hundreds of thousands of pounds. Which is why I changed my channel yet again. I changed my channel to start doing vlogs based around realistic aspects of having a small business. I wanted to show what it's really like growing a business. I wanted to show how hard it is, but also how amazing it is. How I'm having to learn all these things, but also it's so worth it. Like it's just, it's, it's balance. I wanted to show that not everything is 
perfect. Not, you might not get hundreds of thousands of pounds in the first year of running a small business. That doesn't make you a failure. Yeah, there are a lot of people who make small business vlogs who are really amazing, who have these amazing small businesses, who bring in thousands of pounds each month but they've been in business for like five, six, seven, ten years, some of them. I couldn't really find anyone else on YouTube, not really, who was as small as I was, who was sharing what it was like to grow a business, to fail, to have these setbacks and constant struggles, but keep pushing forward anyway, so. So enter the Abbey you all know and hopefully love today. <laughs> That's why I changed my YouTube channel again, and honestly, best thing I ever did. When I started doing vlogs, my channel went from around 300 subscribers in January to in April having almost a thousand subscribers. So I was really close to being monetized and that was only a few months. It was insane. But like I said, I didn't have money. I wasn't monetized on YouTube. I mean, I still don't really make much money from YouTube. I'll be honest with you guys, but that's fine because I love doing it. But you know, rent, bills, food, but obviously because I was you know, paying for all those necessities, I had no money to put into my small business to invest. So my small business wasn't really growing either. It was hindering my small business growth. April, 2023, I had to stop doing YouTube and my small business full time and I got a part time job. This was so hard for me. I. I'm a barista currently. I really like the art of making coffee and all the drinks and stuff. It's really fun. The people I work with are really great as well. So I think I got quite lucky, but I really struggled transitioning from doing all these things full time because I was spending like every waking moment working towards my small business and YouTube. So now suddenly having like 20, 24 hours a week gone because I have to do my my part-time job was really, really hard. <laughs> it took me around three months to get a good routine with my part-time job and doing YouTube and doing my small business, enough that I could consistently get out videos and also continue to grow my small business. It was such a hard process. I won't lie, I broke down so many times <laughs> during those few months where I was adjusting to my part-time job. I just felt hopeless. I didn't know what to do. I had just gotten monetized on YouTube, which was awesome. I was really, really glad about that. I got monetized in, wait, May. I think I was monetized in May. So yeah, that was a really hard time for me. I know a lot of people have small businesses and work full-time jobs and work part-time jobs alongside them. It's not an uncommon thing. It was just a really hard adjustment for me in particular because I had done it full-time and I had never been so happy working on my small business and YouTube full time. And then I had to compromise on it and get a job that I didn't necessarily want. It sucked, but things did get easier after a few months. I just took a long time to adjust to it. It is also a very physically and mentally draining job, which I still struggle with to this day. So very hard time for me, but it has gotten a little bit better. I also realized that Etsy wasn't very easy anymore. Well, it had never really been easy, but I had thought at that time, around April, May, 2023, that I would be getting more orders than what I was. Even now, I still feel like I'm not getting as much many orders as I should be. I maybe get like two to three orders a month on Etsy. Most months, some months I have really good months and I get orders every other day. Most of the time though, not the case. Again, it hit me quite hard. I think because I was going under the stress of having to go part-time with a job and still trying to do all of my small business YouTube stuff. I think also realizing that Etsy was doing nothing for me at the time was just kind of like the, the nail in the coffin. I was just kind of like, oh my God, what am I gonna do? I'm failing, I'm a failure. I just got back up basically. That's all I could do at the time. I thought, okay, these, I'm having problems right now, things are rough, but I'm just gonna have to keep going. I'm just gonna have to get up and keep going and try to find solutions to these problems and try to figure out a good schedule alongside my part-time job. So I tried to get into wholesaling, which I failed very, very, very miserably at. I approached a lot of businesses, small businesses in the areas that have shops, if they would be willing to like, maybe, you know, have a table with my small business stuff on there or, 
tried again on fair, which didn't happen. I don't know, they added me to some waiting list and I've not heard from them since, so I don't know what happened with that. <laughs> Luckily, something good did happen during this time. I got approached by an adorable cat cafe in Switzerland. They approached me wanting to buy a book buy a lot of my products um, for a discount, which is basically what wholesale is. I was so excited. I was so excited. I couldn't believe it. They actually messaged me on Instagram first, but anything I get on Instagram, I just automatically assume it's a scam because it's Instagram. So I actually ignored them the first time around because I thought they were just scamming me. And then they messaged me on Etsy and I was like, oh no, you're, you're actually serious. <laughs> I still am trying to get more into wholesaling. It's still very, very hard, but I am not giving up. I'm still, I'm still positive it's going to work out. That was very exciting that I got my first ever wholesale order after trying and failing miserably for literally months. Now, it's June. 2023. I've had my part-time job for just around a month or two now and I realize I still don't have any money. Turns out part-time on minimum wage doesn't get you very far. I honestly, one of my big things for having a part-time job was that I'd be able to pay my bills and also invest in my business. Unfortunately, I was now able to pay all of my bills but I had no money for my business still. A lot more breakdowns were had that month. <laughs> I didn't really know what to do with myself. I didn't really know if this was going to work out anymore. It, it got hard. It got very hard. But after a storm comes a rainbow, as they sometimes say. I got accepted into a market stall. A very, very big market event. One that I hadn't done before. It was free, might I add. And it was dead in the center of the city, like dead set in the middle of the street, in the middle of the center of the city. You can't get much better than that, right? And it was free. Like everything I made from that market stall, I got to take home. I was really panicking as well that month because I was running out of ink. I was low on stock. I had, I was just not having a good time. This market really changed everything for me. At that market stall, I made over 240 pounds from one day. That was the most money I have ever made for my small business. It was really the thing I needed to get me back up off the ground again. I had been trying to pick myself up and carry forward for so long and I just couldn't seem to do it because every time I stood back up, something would happen and I'd have another breakdown. This market store really saved me from that mindset. It kind of showed to me that this is worth it. Good things will happen. You just have to wait for them. Like you've come so far, like you've made almost 250 pounds in one day from your small business that you built up off the ground. Oh, that, that market store. If I hadn't done that market store, I don't know where I'd be today. The money from that market store not only allowed me to buy new stock, it allowed me to stock up on ink again. It allowed me to get more paper for my printer as well and just stock, restock up on everything that I needed to. It really, really was just the, the help that I needed at the time. And after that, things only started getting better. July 2023 was probably one of the best months that I ever had for my small business. Mostly because that was when I got approved for my business loan. So after that huge market stall, it was only a week later when I got approved for my business loan in which I got £1,500. With that money, I was able to get a new camera for YouTube, better equipment, a lot more stock, and even some machines. I can now do sublimation at home because of that business loan. It really has changed everything for me. Just, I can't, there's no words. I still, even now, I just, I struggle to like fathom words. <laughs> I, I, as to how far I've come from June when I was at that, that low point to now, it's insane. Let's go back a little bit. Like I said, in May, June time, beginning of June, I realized I'm not getting any money from my part-time job to invest in my small business. And I didn't know what else to do with myself until I remembered back when I first started my small business, I actually looked into getting a business loan. My God, am I so glad I didn't because I have no doubt in my mind I would have wasted that money so hard. <laughs> Basically, the first time around, I chickened out. I was really too scared to go for it because I didn't have a job, so I had no way to pay it back. I started thinking about it again because now I had a part-time job, I could pay it back in small amounts each month. Getting a large sum of money would 
change everything for me. And it did. <laughs> so I began the very, very lengthy process to apply for a business loan. I got a startup business loan of £1,500 and it was a really good idea. Now we're in July, July 6th, 2023. I got my business loan. It hit my bank account. First thing I do, go get my new camera. My old camera sitting back there collecting dust now was terrible for YouTube. I was now monetized. I had over a thousand subscribers. I realized that it had been a year since I started my YouTube channel, even though I had changed niche like three times over. It had now been a year. I needed to up my game. So not only did I get 250 pounds from that market stall, a week later, I had like 1,500 pounds in my bank account for my business. That was so much money. I didn't know what to do with it all. I had a few days after getting all that money where I was like, I need to process all of this first and foremost. <laughs> I started designing a lot of products, buying new products. I knew what I wanted to buy already. I got tote bag designs, pencil cases, and then I was going to get notebooks and mouse pads. However, I realized that maybe it would be a better investment a better use of this money, if you will, to buy machines that are gonna help me continuously make new products for years to come rather than just purchasing a small quantity of products that might go in a month, you know? So, I bought a sublimation printer and I bought a mug heat press. It hasn't been that long since the video was uploaded. You guys probably still remember what happened with that. I had a faulty machine. The business loan has been such a massive help to me. It's still pretty new. It is only September, 2023. I started to realize that I was gaining a lot more confident with my business. I knew what my business was. I knew who my customers were. I knew who my audience was. I was a lot more confident with my YouTube channel. I started to really, really feel this change in myself even now. Looking back to a year ago, I feel like I'm looking at a little tiny innocent mouse. <laughs> That's the only way I could describe it. And I'm like, oh, I just want to keep you safe. Whereas now I just feel like I'm so confident and proud of what I do. I'm not really scared anymore to show people that I have a small business, that I do YouTube. I just don't care anymore. I even film in public now. It's insane. <laughs> so through August, I was spending my business loan, doing all that stuff. That takes us to today, September 2023. It has been a year since I started my small business and I still can't quite believe it when I say that, honestly. I still don't, it still doesn't feel right to say it's been a year. I don't know. Like, I know it's been a year, but it just doesn't feel like it's been a year. So much has happened in this year. I just, looking back, I am so proud of myself for everything that I've done. I know I still have bad days. I still break down every now and then from stress. I still have problems that come up that I don't know what to do. There's still a lot of things within a small business that I'm still a bit unsure about, that I'm still trying to figure out. I'm still learning every single day, but I'm just so proud of myself and how far I've come and how much I've grown. This time last year, I did expect myself to be able to go full time with my small business. That hasn't happened. I am not even part time with my small business. It's basically a side hobby at this point, still. I think back then I was desperate to not have to go back to work, to be able to make my dream come true in a short amount of time. Whereas now I have learned patience and I've learned that this isn't something I can rush. I love what I do. I wake up every day and I'm, yeah, I have a lot of work that I need to get done. Sometimes I get stressed, sometimes I break down, but I love what I do and every day I wake up and I'm just excited to get to work, to work on my small business, to make the videos for YouTube. And I accept that it's probably gonna take me a good few years to get to the point where I am full time with my small business. But I, because I have that confidence now, I have no doubt in my mind that this one day will be a full time thing. I just need to give it time and patience and a lot of love. <laughs> I made a lot of mistakes this past year. I set up my Etsy shop in literally the worst way possible. I just rushed it all. I just wanted to get it open. I didn't think of my products or anything. And I look back and I'm like, yeah, that was stupid. But I also really acknowledge that I had to make those mistakes to, to grow, to be where I am today. My hair isn't the only thing that's grown this past year. <laughs> 
I did ask you guys if you had any questions for me um, for this video because I thought I'd do a little Q&A in case there's anything you guys wanted to know and there was a few questions so I'm gonna answer them now. The first one was what do your family and friends think about this and did you tell them straight away that you had a small business? No, <laughs> I didn't. Actually there's some people in my family that don't even know that I do YouTube still Mostly just because it's a really weird thing to bring up. At first it was definitely because I didn't want them to know I was doing YouTube. They all have full-time corporate retail jobs and stuff and I'm like over here is the artsy weird cousin who's just like, yeah, I'm starting a small business and I make videos in my bedroom. <laughs> it's just a little strange. But at first I definitely did not tell them that I had a YouTube channel. Mostly YouTube, my small business I've not been as scared to talk about. When I started, the only people that knew that I did YouTube and had a small business were my best friends. I have three friends, they all knew. Um, my mom and my boyfriend. That was it. <laughs> no one else knew. After a while, I did start telling my family about my small business. But I just still haven't brought up the fact that I have a YouTube channel. My co One of my cousins does know, because I mentioned it briefly, but... It's just a really weird thing to bring up and I'm not really sure how to like bring it up, you know, at family dinner. My advice is if you are scared to tell your family and friends about your small business or whatever it is you're doing, that's fine. You don't have to tell people, it's your thing. The reason that I'm so confident with it now is because it's working, it's growing, I have a lot to show for it. I don't feel as vulnerable. When you're at the start of your journey with a small business, with YouTube, whatever it is, you're gonna feel the most vulnerable because you don't know if it's gonna work out. You might get five months down the line and think, you know what, I'm not enjoying this or it's not working out. It's very, very common to not want, even the people that you love, see you, see you fail. If you don't wanna tell anyone that you've got a small business or you're doing this thing, you don't have to. Don't stress about it. You can always tell them at a later date. It's your thing, you get to choose who knows about it. Tell us about yourself. I noticed you have an All Might mug in your um, some of your videos. Um, this one, I'm assuming, is the one I'm drinking out of currently. <laughs> I find it funny you asked that. I'm drinking out of it. Yep, I'm a bit of a nerd if you can't haven't realised by all my Funko Pops and manga up there. I like anime. I'm currently obsessed with Baldur's Gate. Other than that, most of my life is consumed by art cartoons and my small business and YouTube. <laughs> what are your goals for your small business for the next 6 to 12 months? Um, I really want to get into wholesaling. Fair especially, I really want to get on fair. I don't know if I will. I also want to do some very big market stalls. Obviously Christmas is coming up so I'm trying to get in some Christmas market stalls. <laughs> and of course, sublimation. I'm very excited to get my own cups and to make my own cups. So yeah, a lot of it's gonna be sublimation. I would really like to have things like coasters, mouse pads. I just wanna build my stock. I just feel like ever since I started my small business, I have been constantly behind with trying to build my stock. That's what happens when you start a small business with seven items in your shop that you've rushed to put out there. So don't be like me, kids. What advice would you give yourself from a year ago? Um, how about don't open a shop with only seven products and most of them being art prints? <laughs> Don't, pr don't try print on demand, it's not gonna work out. <laughs> no, honestly, I think I'd probably just say, look, you're very ambitious and it's very, very great that you're that ambitious. I, I still am a very ambitious person, but growing a small business is not something that you can do within a year, especially with no prior experience. I would probably tell myself to be patient, just love what you're doing and enjoy the growth, enjoy the journey. At the beginning of my business, I was very bad at that. I just wanted to get my products out there, live my dream, and have a full-time income for my small business. Whereas now, I feel like I've accepted that that's not gonna happen. It's gonna take more time. I might not even have a successful full-time business in five years time, I don't know. But all I know is I love what I'm doing and I wouldn't stop for the world and that is what matters. Enjoy the journey. Don't be impatient. Don't start your Etsy with only seven listings. Most of them being art prints. <laughs> Think about your target audience. <laughs> I think I'd scare my past self actually. <laughs> A year ago, I was very lost and I did not have a sense of purpose, like at all. Having this small business and doing YouTube has given me a really big sense of purpose and confidence. I feel pride in what I do and I love what I do. And it's something I didn't expect, but it has changed my whole personality. I feel like I'm a lot happier now than what I was. I feel like, I don't know, I just feel like life's great. And I didn't feel like that a year ago, you know? <laughs> so we have two very similar questions here. 
What's your favorite product and what's your least favorite product? My favorite product right now, probably my pencil cases, specifically the cottage core cross hatch, or maybe either the cat tote bag or the mushroom tote bag. I'm not sure actually. I have quite a lot of things that I like that I really enjoy. It's a hard question. My least favorite is probably, I don't know, because I, I don't really make products that I don't like. Um, and if I did, they don't, they, they're, not, they're not around anymore because <laughs> I stopped selling them. Maybe my badges. I've got a pumpkin badge and a space cat badge. I don't hate them. I like them. They're actually the two badges that I had when I first opened my Etsy shop. Th those are those two badges. I still have them. I only bought 20 of each. I still have tons of them. <laughs> they don't sell very well. I just think they're a little bit plain. I still think they're cute. But if I was going to design them again today, I think I'd add a little more pizzazz to them, you know? What inspired you to become an artist? That is <laughs> a good question. I've always been into art. I always find artists are like, I could draw ever since I could hold a pen. Not me. I've always been very creative, but as a kid, um, I was also very sporty as well. I think I definitely focused on sport a lot more when I was a kid. It wasn't until I got like to 16 years old, there was this one girl in my class. I remember, this sounds awful, but every artist is a bad artist when they first start out. I remember she was really, really bad at art. I mean, I was too, but she continuously drawed every single day and she'd always draw in class. And I noticed after a couple of years, how much she had like gotten better. And I don't know why it never clicked with me. Like if you stick with something, you're passionate about, you'll get better at it. <laughs> I've always been the kind of person, not so much now, but when I was a kid, where it's like, if I'm not good at it straight away, then I'm giving up. <laughs> I just kind of got inspired by it, I guess. I kind of just wanted to be able to draw as well. I also had been watching like a lot of YouTube videos, like artist YouTube videos. I'm talking Mark Crilly, who remembers that guy? Brilliant. Uh, Bailey J, that was when I first found her videos, how to draw braids, that was the first ever video I watched of hers. Anyway, that was how I got into art. How many cats do you have? I have three cats. They are called Ash, Suki and Momo. Suki and Momo are absolutely named after Avatar The Last Airbender characters. As I said, I'm a bit of a nerd. You know, I couldn't help myself, I couldn't help myself. <laughs> What's the scariest thing you've done for your small business? Starting. <laughs> Starting was the scariest thing. Everything after that, I mean, I've had times where I've been terrified, like doing that big market stall or just getting into markets for the first time. I feel scared quite a lot. I just try to push it down and get on with it because if it doesn't work out, it's not the end of the world. Yeah, I might have lost a bit of money, but it's better to know than to not know. That's what I try to tell myself. But nothing has been scarier than the day that I put my shop live. Are you going to do conventions in the future? I would love to do conventions. I have tried so hard to get into conventions. Unfortunately, in Britain, or at least where I live, I live in the north. There's not a lot of conventions here. There is maybe two big ones a year, and uh, they, 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 they are full all the time. I did apply to one of them. Um, it's called SunnyCon. I did apply to that one and I applied two minutes after the application went open and they were like, you didn't get it, we're putting you on a waiting list. However, I am on the waiting list at least, so I'm hoping by maybe March next year time, someone might drop out and then I can like get in there because I would love to do a convention. I would love to do a convention. That is absolutely another thing that I want to do within this next year coming up. Starting a small business, just oh my god, my life has just improved drastically. It just, I feel so blessed that I know who I am and I know who I want to be and I know what I want to do with my life. So excited for this next year and I really, really hope you guys will stick around to share it with me. Hopefully we're gonna see massive growth this next year. Hopefully we're gonna see a lot of good stuff happening. Probably a lot of bad too, but we'll get through it together. So I hope you guys stick around for all that is to come within this next year and that we can continue growing together. Thank you guys so much for watching and for being here this past year. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.